Hi guys, welcome to the first rerun on the rerun watch his YouTube channel. I'll be your host Sam, and this is going to be our first video review on the CWC G10. So right now we're structuring the video, it's kind of part face cam like this, part in hand, part b-roll. Uh, let us know if you like that, let us know if you'd like to see less of our face, more of our face, more nice b-roll from Ben, I'm sure you do. Um, and yeah, enjoy the review. So the story behind this particular watch is I bought it from the son of the original owner, uh, who's a member of the Royal Navy. Um, I paid about £80 for it, which I thought was decent at the time, but some people would actually say it's overpaying. Uh, it came on this super nice uh, green single pass NATO, which is really solid um, and comes with really chunky hardware. So I quite like it. This particular G10 is from the late 80s, so it features a tritium dial, as denoted by the T symbol just below the CWC logo. Newer variations of this watch, which you can buy direct from the CWC website, feature an L on the dial. This shows the Superlumina instead of the old-fashioned tritium for visibility at night. In terms of movement, my watch is actually kind of middle of the range. Older examples of the G10 were fitted with the ESA 536.121, which are dualist, fairly thick movements. Later military models, like mine, had the slightly thinner 7 joule ESA 955.114. And finally, the modern versions like the one on screen, so you can buy direct from CWC now, use the ETA 955.102, which also features 7 jewels. So as I said, this watch has been in my collection for about 5 months now, and I honestly think it's the best field watch you can buy for the money. It's a rugged, unrefined tool watch that serves its intended purpose near flawlessly. It's 36mm wide case, it looks like it would be too clunky and angular to truly wear comfortably. However, it hugs onto my 65 half inch wrist incredibly well and is easy to forget about. For me, this is just what I need from a tool watch. An accurate, unobtrusive tool, ready to tell you the time whenever you need it most. Possibly my favourite part of the watch is its dial. It's incredibly legible and sometimes easier to read than my Seiko SKX. I wear my CWC most outside, when I'm climbing, hiking, and when I really just don't want to wear one of my more fragile watches in my collection. I'm safe in the knowledge that it can withstand a lot of abuse, and that I can polish out any scratches I make in the acrylic crystal easily. In my view, this watch only has two downsides, first of which is shared by many other field watches, a lack of decent water resistance. While the modern versions do claim a humble 5ATM or about 50 meters of water resistance, I don't trust this late 80s example anywhere near water. The second downside is its fixed 90mm lugs. This severely limits strap options for this watch and effectively means this watch can only be paired with a NATO or Zulu strap. Fortunately, this doesn't tend to bother me and I like to wear it on a green strap it came with or in a grey NATO I've had for a while. The design of the CWC G10 isn't for everyone. It's an unrefined tool watch after all. Designed to fit MOD specifications with no worries about appealing to members of the public. Probably the most unique part of the G10 is its bezel-less monoblock case, which is quite polarizing with some collectors. It also features an unsigned crown, fixed 19 mm lugs, and an MOD broad arrow on the case back. Along with this MOD broad arrow, the case back also features a series of numbers, which are effectively codes denoting what the watch is, when it was issued, and a few other pieces of information. On this particular watch, codes stand for the following. 0552 denotes that the watch was ordered by the Navy. 6645 is a NATO code for a wristwatch. 99 is the NATO code for the United Kingdom. 541 5317 denotes that the watch is electronic or quartz watch. 32774 is the serial number of this watch. Finally, 89 simply means 1989, the year of delivery to the Navy. Something you may notice about my G10 are the horizontal marks covering most of the case back. They're very light and they're just where the strap has polished the case over years of use. 
final part of the G10's case back is its battery access hole, which can be unscrewed easily with a penny. As you can see, it only takes a few firm twists with a penny for the battery access port to open. This allows the watch's battery to be changed with a few firm twists without any real tools needed. So there's my collection's route of the CWC G10. Uh, if you liked it, please like the video. If you want to see more, please subscribe. If you have any other ideas for videos, podcasts, discussions you'd like to see us have, please comment below.